Okay, now let's talk real quick about using pre-qualifiers in your ads. These are little things you can add to an, an ad itself to the ad copy and you know the description or part of the ad, which will kind of whittle down or filter out some of the audience. So typically you want to use these if you find a keyword that's getting a lot of traffic, so you're getting a lot of clicks, but the conversions really aren't where you want them to be because you're clearly not getting a lot of qualified traffic you're getting some traffic, so let's say you are getting some conversions, so you're getting some activity there, but you're not getting enough conversions or enough buyers, let's say, for a product, and you think it's too many people just you know, clicking the ad that shouldn't be clicking the ad. So one of the things you can test with is using a pre-qualifier. Now, as I already mentioned, since a pre-qualifier will cut out a portion of the audience, it's gonna lower your click-through rate. And because the click-through rate is so important here to get the kind of lower click price and to get the higher placements and the more exposure from Google, we got to be careful here. However, there are many, many keywords where pre-qualifiers work very, very well. We may end up paying a little bit more per click. We may not quite get the impressions that a competitor might get. Uh, not always the case, but that may be the case. But we can still make a lot more profit by using pre-qualifiers than if we don't use them. So it's one of the ways we can actually turn a losing campaign or ad group into a profitable one. So these are different types of things you can add to your ad and test with. But of course, like I said, keep an eye on that click-through rate and also an eye on that conversion rate and then ultimately the ROI. Uh, based on the new click costs and what your profit is to really balance out that fine balance of uh, is it worth lowering the click-through rate to hopefully increase the profit on the other end. So one of the things you can use is a price in the ad itself. If you're selling something, you can literally put the price right in the ad, $299 or $30 a month or $500 setup fee or anything about a price, you know, period. Putting a price immediately tells somebody that you're selling something. And it's one way you'll weed out a lot of clicks that may, you know, have probably would have never bought your thing or have been interested in. Now, putting a price is dangerous because it's one of the biggest pre-qualifiers. Uh, certainly, you may put $299 and scare some people off that may have actually bought it for $299 once they went over to the site and saw how great the product was and was convinced that it's something they wanted. They may have still bought it, but because your ad has very limited amount of space to do a, a proper selling job for the product, uh, you may scare people off. So be very careful using price. You can use a requirement such as 10K minimum investment required or 620 or more uh, credit score required or you know any type of requirement that somebody needs in order to do business with you that could weed out some things it must be over 18. So in Google AdWords for our the search display here, I'm sorry, the search network, not display network, which we'll cover later. But in the search network, a lot of times we don't have great controls, of course, over demographics. Now we may know what our demographics are if we've honed in on our micro targeting demographics that produce most of the sales in our business. Those ideal customers for us, which we've been talking about throughout this course for targeting. Well, if we know what some of those big ones are, we can use those as pre-qualifiers in some of our ads to really try to find that exact customer. So if we know, obviously, uh, you know, our customers are over 18 because they're adults or they can't, let's say, sign a contract with us. It's not legal and we just know we don't sell to kids. Then you may want to put in there, you know, 18 plus or something age related. Or if you sell planning for, you know, uh, senior citizens over a certain age or if you provide any kind of professional services to uh, seniors or what you may put 55 plus age only for 55 and older or something like that. So but you can put all kinds of requirements. You can put a skill. You must know PHP, like for the programming language, uh, must know how to use a screwdriver, that implies the old, you know, assembly required, um, must know CPR, I mean, it just could be anything, any type of skill you can possibly think of, uh, you know, must, must know basic yoga, it just depends on whatever the product is, and, you know, and whatever, uh, whatever the solution or, well, tying into the benefit and feature and how it all ties together, you know, if there is a skill required. You can use a skill level, like if you're talking about a specific thing, like something for programmers, something for, um, 
you know, whatever, karate people, whatever. You could put skill level purple belt and better, intermediate and up, you know, whatever that skill level might be. You can use a size if you're selling products, you know, and if let's say you're selling men's boots, you could say only 10, only sizes 10 to 12, 10, 11 and 12. Or if it's a woman's dress that you're selling, it could be, you know, sizes under 16. So you could use a size as a pre-qualifier uh, or anything physical about them. If it's a hat, it could be a certain size, so on and so forth. You could use a commitment. You could say there's a monthly fee. You can say it takes six weeks, you know, application process, 30 days. You can do all kinds of things to tie into it what really the offer is more about, which may weed out some folks. You can do must-haves. Like this, this is kind of like a requirement, but maybe it's like something they have to have to make the whole thing work. Like it's, they got to have an iPad or it's for a Macintosh only or um, they need to live in a one-story house. I mean, it all depends on what the thing is that you're offering. You can use an interest like that, you know, they must like painting or must like animals or, uh, you know, must watch TV eight hours plus a week. I mean, it could be anything you could possibly think of, but these are ways people will read the ad and they go, oh, that's not me. And hopefully they won't click. Last but not least, you can use a status, you know, for single people only, only for married couples, only for parents, only for low blood pressure, normal blood pressure people only for fit people, not for anyone overweight. It's only for master's degree holders and up only for, you know, only for people that speak two languages, any type of status skill. You can tie all these together in many different ways, but these are all pre-qualifier fires. Now these are all things that will weed out a certain part of the audience and get you more towards the clicks that you really want. So this will technically or, or typically I should say, uh, get you higher conversion rates on any clicks that you get. Again, the downside is it'll lower your click-through rate and that may affect profitability more than the increase in conversion rate. So it's something you need to test and carefully keep an eye on your statistics.